for our next news special report. Welcome to our special report. Tonight we're delving into a story that's shaking the foundations of our republic. Picture this. A lone state official, Maine's Secretary of State, Shana Bellows, takes a stand that could alter the course of American politics. She's barred former President Trump from the Maine ballot, and the mainstream media is hailing her as a hero. But wait, there's more to the story than meets the eye. The fine print in her ruling, the legal intricacies, and the uproar it's caused. We're unpacking it all. And this isn't just about one candidate or one state. It's a narrative that challenges the very essence of our, of our electoral process. And trust me, you don't want to miss my final thought on this. It's a perspective that cuts through the noise and speaks directly to the heart of what it means to be an American voter. Now, before we dive deeper into tonight's report, let's take a moment, just like how our trustworthy reporting is made possible by our sponsors, the stability of our nation's political landscape is foundational. And speaking of foundations, let's talk gold. With wars, economic uncertainties, and looming rate cuts, gold has soared past 2,000 an ounce. It's reminiscent of the 1970s turmoil, war crisis, financial instability, just like we're witnessing today. Our national debt skyrocketing, and there's a direct correlation to the price of gold. Remember, in times of political and economic uncertainty, gold remains a steadfast protector of value. So call the Patriot Gold Group, the number's on the screen, and mention Next News for top-rated service. Gold isn't just a metal, it's a safeguard for your future. Write that number down, 888-857-9437, and mention Next News. Now, in a move that sent shockwaves through the political landscape, Maine's Secretary of State has made a decision that could be a game-changer in American politics. She has disqualified former President Donald Trump from appearing on Maine's primary ballot. But it's not just the action itself that's stirring controversy. It's the way it was done, the reasons behind it, and the reaction it elicited. Now, let's start at the beginning. Bellows, a Democrat, based her decision on Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, citing Trump's alleged role in the January 6th Capitol incident. This is unprecedented. No Secretary of State has ever used this section to bar a presidential candidate from the ballot. And Bellows' rationale hinges on a narrative of election fraud and claims that Trump incited violence. But let's take a look closer. The image here shows the letter from Trump's lawyers demanding Bellows' recusal, citing her past statements about January 6th. It's a crucial piece of this puzzle. Bellows' own words on social media indicate a predetermined stance on Trump, suggesting a lack of impartiality in her decision-making process. And then there is the fine print. On CNN, Bellows stated that she'd suspend her decision if the U.S. Supreme Court rules Trump can be on the ballot. Did you hear me? She's playing a waiting game, a move that's both strategic and telling. It reveals the uncertainty and possibility of the political motivation behind her decision. In this clip, you'll hear Bellows herself discussing the suspension of her ruling. It's a rare glimpse in the political maneuvering at play. Watch. I think it's really important that people understand the process. Uh, as a general matter, states uh, have the power to control their own ballots, and in fact do under the Constitution. And Maine law specifically delegates to me, as Secretary of State, a requirement to review the qualifications for any candidate running for office. So for example, uh, last week, the Superior Court found that my decision to bar Mr. Chris Christie from Maine's presidential primary ballot due to lack of signatures was lawful and correct. So my job, I qualify Mr. Trump for the ballot, uh, and under Maine law, any registered voter can bring a challenge to that qualification. In this case, there were three challenges, and I was required by law to hold a hearing, an administrative hearing, to review the evidence, hear testimony, both sides were represented by counsel. Mr. Trump was represented by an attorney, and then I'm required to issue a decision. That's my obligation under the oath I swore to the Constitution. I reviewed Section 3 of the 14th Amendment very carefully and determined that Section 3 of the 14th Amendment does not say conviction, it says engage. And let's go back and keep in mind that the events of January 6, 2021 were unprecedented and tragic. This was an attack not only on the Capitol and the government officials, the former vice president, members of Congress, but an attack on the rule of law. And the weight of evidence that I reviewed indicated uh, that it was in fact an insurrection and Mr. Trump engaged in that insurrection under section three of the 14th amendment. I will always implement what the court decides. And this type of proceeding is not unusual as part of my duties in Maine under Maine election law. 
but I will always uphold what the court does. And it's part of the job of being Secretary of State. Uh, should the U.S. Supreme Court rule that Mr. Trump be on the ballot, I will in fact place him on the ballot. It's part of why I suspended the effect of my decision until the courts can act. Uh, so no ballots are being printed until that Superior Court uh, decision or Supreme Court decision uh, might come down. Uh, although we're looking at a very tight time frame. She said it right there. Now let's talk about the media's role. CNN and MSNBC were quick to spotlight Bellows framing her decision as brave and groundbreaking. It's no secret that these networks have been critical of Trump, but their coverage of the incident has been particularly glowing. Bellows even boasted on MSNBC about Maine's voter participation rate, linking it to her decision. Watch this MSNBC clip where Bellows justifies her decision, and you'll see the narrative that's being spun. Watch. It's a very detailed decision. Uh, we lay out uh, why under Maine law, the Secretary of State has the authority, indeed the obligation, I'm duty bound to make this determination. Uh, we also, I rather, um, laid out that the record demonstrates that in fact, the events of January 6, 2021, which were unprecedented and tragic, uh, were an insurrection uh, in the meaning of section three of the 14th amendment. And finally, uh, in reviewing the facts presented, the evidence, uh, the law, the history, um, we determined uh, under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment that Mr. Trump engaged in insurrection and therefore was disqualified. Now, I, I, I have to say, not only is this an incredibly important decision, but it's a very brave decision. Uh, the Trump campaign has, has already come out attacking you. Uh, they have said that you are a, a virulent leftist and a hyper-partisan Biden-supporting Democrat. First and foremost, it's important to know, my oath to the Constitution, my obligations to the Constitution and rule of law come before any other consideration. No other factors could weigh on that decision and did not. I'm duty-bound to both hold a hearing and make a ruling. And under the law, there's a very compressed timeline uh, in evaluating this. Uh, I came to the conclusion that I could not, unfortunately or fortunately, wait for the United States Supreme Court to make a de decision. Uh, the main law required me to issue that decision, which I did today. I smiled because we were number one in voter turnout per capita in 2022. We are really proud of that. And we have a really strong framework of election laws that encourage citizen participation. Uh, we have same day voter registration. We have no excuse absentee voting up to 30 days prior to election day. Uh, we uh, make it really easy to register to vote, to cast your ballot and know your ballot will be counted. And we're really proud of our national leadership in voter participation and citizen engagement in elections and in the democratic process. Oh, it's like a super Karen over there. However, this isn't just about media bias or political maneuvering. There's a deeper issue here, the undermining of our rights. By unilaterally deciding to remove Trump from the ballot, Bellows has effectively disenfranchised hundreds of thousands of Republican voters in Maine. This sets a dangerous precedent. If a single state official can determine a candidate's eligibility based on subjective interpretations of their actions, where does it end? Now take a look at this clip of Bellows on Anderson Cooper 360. Her words, her demeanor, it all speaks volumes. Watch. Again, I am so mindful, and I, I said this in my decision, uh, that it is unprecedented. No Secretary of State has ever deprived a presidential candidate of ballot access based on Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, but no presidential candidate has ever engaged in insurrection and been disqualified under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. But there's more. CNN's own senior legal analyst, Ellie Honig, pointed out the shaky legal grounds of Bellow's decision, noting it was based on YouTube clips and news reports, materials that wouldn't hold up in a regular court. And Bellows isn't even a lawyer, which raises questions about her legal acumen in interpreting the Constitution and making such a significant decision. Watch him dissect Bellows' ruling in this clip. Watch. Is, were the processes, were these hearings fair? Did they comport with due process? And I think there's a question there with regard to what Maine did. Because if you look at the hearing, and she details this in the, in the ruling, 
They heard from one fact witness, a law professor. She based her ruling on a lot of documents, but also YouTube clips, news reports, things that would never pass the bar in normal court. She's not a lawyer, by the way. It's a smartly written decision, clearly consulted with lawyers, but this is an unelected. She's chosen by the state legislature. She's elected by the chosen state legislature. By, uh, chosen elected by the legislature, but not democratically elected, not a knock. That's just the way it's set up in Maine. And this hearing, look, it doesn't have to be a criminal trial. We don't have to have all the protections. But I think the argument you'll hear from opponents is, one, not up to the states to do this. This is why we have all different decisions from all different states. And two, the procedures were not up to snuff. The broader implications are startling. Maine is now the second state after Colorado to bar Trump based on 14th Amendment claims. It's a move that could ripple across the nation, affecting future elections and the very core of our democratic process. Now here, Pelos Bo Bellows post on the platform now known as X, previously Twitter, underscores her stance on the January 6th event, revealing a perspective that could be seen as biased. But let's hear from the other side. Vivek Ramaswamy, a Republican presidential contender, called Bellow's decision a threat to democracy. Take a look at Ramaswamy's reaction here. It's a clear indicator of the widespread concern and frustration. Watch. Vivek, the secretaries of states in 2020, secretaries of states, one individual, would come in and wipe away the laws of the legislature and say, because of COVID, I'm changing mail-in balloting. One person changing election rules. That was 2020. 2024, one person saying, I am disenfranchising Trump voters. Your thoughts? Well, look, Kaylee, I think you phrased it well, but I would say that this is not an action of one person. This is the action of an entire system that has an anaphylactic reaction to one man. And I think they're dropping the breadcrumbs. They're making it clearer by the day. I'm concerned that they will not allow this man to get anywhere near the start line of the election, let alone the finish line. And I say this as somebody who's running in the same race as Donald Trump. This is not how we should want to win. So I stand by the pledge I made earlier on the back of the Colorado decision, and I reiterate it today, that I will voluntarily, as a Republican candidate, remove myself from any GOP primary ballot where one of my competitors, Donald Trump included, is forcibly removed through this unconstitutional maneuver. And I think one thing that the other Republican candidates can do, Kaylee, is to fight against this, to say that Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley and Chris Christie do the same thing, that if Maine is going to do this, we then take Maine out of the GOP primary process. That's the logical way to handle this. And so I made that announcement tonight. I challenge every one of my other competitors in the GOP primary to do the same thing, to say that we will not stand by idly and watch this brazen form of election interference in the GOP primary itself. And I think that that's not a left wing or a right wing issue. It shouldn't be. This is about the Constitution and who we are as Americans. And that's why I've taken the position I have. And he's not alone in this sentiment. Governor Ron DeSantis questioned whether this sets a precedent for disqualifying candidates based on arbitrary criteria. In this clip, DeSantis raises vital questions about the implications of Bellow's decision. Watch this. Here to weigh in live from the campaign trail in Iowa, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Governor, you just heard this news like we did. What's your reaction? Well, the idea that one bureaucrat in an executive position can simply unilaterally disqualify someone from office, that turns on its head every notion of constitutional due process that this country has always abided by for over 200 years. Uh, it opens up Pandora's box. Can you have a Republican secretary of state uh, disqualify Biden from the ballot? Because he's let in 8 million people illegally, a massive invasion, including uh, from enemies of our country. Uh, places like Iran, China, Middle East have poured in with his knowledge and assent, basically. Uh, so it really opens up Pandora's box. I don't think that this ultimately will be legally sustained uh, by the U.S. Supreme Court. But I do think that this is going to be a constant throughout the election year where there's going to be different parts of these legal cases uh, that are going to be front and center. Uh, I think that we win uh, when we hold Biden accountable and talk about the issues that matter to the American people. So I think the Democrats, they want the election to be about uh, all these other issues. They do not want to face accountability for their failed policies. And then there's the legal perspective. The U.S. Supreme Court will ultimately decide this issue, but the fact that it's reached this level is troubling in itself. It reflects a growing trend where political battles are increasingly fought in the courts, further polarizing an already divided nation. 
The reality is Maine's four electoral votes are crucial. In 2020, Trump won one of Maine's electors and disqualifying him based on controversial interpretation of the 14th Amendment not only impacts Trump, but also sets a precedent for how future candidates could be treated. As we delve into the complex issue, let's not forget the big picture. This isn't just about Trump or Maine, it's about the integrity of our electoral process and the principles of our republic. And here in the fine print, Bellows admits she is waiting for the Supreme Court's decision. This image on your screen shows her acknowledging the conditional nature of her ruling. That says it all. I will suspend the effect of my decision until the Superior Court rules on any appeal or the time to appeal under the section until it's expired. There you have it, friends. If you got value from this report, tap subscribe. Don't miss what's coming up next. My final thought. Now, as we wrap up tonight's report, let's focus on the crux of the matter. The fine print in her ruling. It's here where the truth lies. Almost hidden, but glaringly significant. Bellows knows her decision to disqualify Trump from the main ballots on shaky ground, and that's why she suspended it pending the Supreme Court's verdict. It's an admission, albeit a subtle one, that her action may not withstand legal scrutiny. This fine print is a telling sign. It reveals a lack of conviction in her own ruling, an uncertainty that speaks volumes. It's an acknowledgement that her decision, celebrated by some of the media as a bold move, is in reality a precarious gamble, one that could unravel under the nation's highest court's examination. This isn't just about a ballot decision. It's about the integrity of our electoral process and the respect for legal boundaries. The fine print in her ruling isn't just a footnote. It's a stark reminder that in our republic, not even a secretary of state can unilaterally decide the fate of our democracy without accountability. This story matters because it underscores the critical balance between political actions and the rule of law, a balance we must vigilantly maintain to preserve the core values of our nation. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video. Now keep up your quest for truth with this next news report. And if you found our channel enlightening, join the millions who agree with you. Tap subscribe. Thank you for watching the Next News Network.